track into. That's got it. Brett. That's got it there. On the track into like here. Oh. Caroline Grosswell was the name. That's her grave there, Joel. Her and her husband, eh? There. What? Is that a picture of Caroline's grave? Yes. Yeah. Good. Here, yeah. Rob. You drive on that. You drive? Yeah, Rob's driving. Got to go okay, so Caroline and her husband, or her boyfriend, whoever it was, drove into Lake Eyre from William Creek, there. and probably the worst part of Australia to be in, or well, definitely one of them. And, and um, right the so they got bogged on the edge of Lake Eyre, uh, on the, the where the tank and the little area was there, and they hung around for a day to try and get out. Nobody there. Anyway, they. She did, and they decided they were going to walk 70 odd k's back to um, William Creek. So, why they. Anyway, the husband got the shits on and went back to the caravan, or the Brits render actually, and uh, said, You can carry on. So she carried on. And. What did you do there? The prior preparation planning prevent. Yeah, leave it, sure. Um, anyway, she, short, short and long of it all, she died in the afternoon of exposure. She had water with her and walked past the trough uh, out there. It was on uh, Anna Creek Station. And anyway, she died out there and about two days later, somebody turned up and found her and then found her partner was still alive, he had water and shelter and everything in the, in the Brits Renner um, and came out of that so I was actually in Bright when that happened in Victoria and a bloody phone was going off its head. Um, anyway, she got buried and all that sort of stuff and then there was a fair bit of hullabaloo with the forward drive organisations about it, so I said, oh, bugger it off. And the only reason I didn't get out was, A, they didn't put the hubs in, and B, they didn't let their tyres down. So that's all the copper did when he turned up. Hubs in, let tyres down to 20 pound and drove the thing out. So I said, well, I might help somebody and start doing seminars. So I started in 2000 doing seminars on a Monday night. And uh, I gave up last year because I was a bit crook. Uh, I spent 18 months in hospital just recently. So this was number one time back. So I said to Brennan, I used to come at night time, but that's not possible because I need people to put me to bed and do all that sort of thing. So I, um, I said to him, how about we do it at a lunchtime session and see how we go. So welcome and thanks for coming. Okay, so through to the words up here, prior preparation and planning prevent a poor performance and so true when going bush and we we see so many people come up here and not got plenty of gear but never, not always the right stuff. I think so. The right stuff, you know, I eat plenty of water. There was a guy who recently died out on the Fink River. He, Went out in the high car, a little um, row four extra. extra. You went and got him, didn't you? Yeah, I picked him up. But and um, him anyway. he died out there because he got bogged by himself. Two litres of water, and that was it. You know, and you consider how much water you need when you go out here. You know, we take 20 litres as a minimum just for a day trip. And uh, my truck. And my caravan, got a tire behind me, we got over 200 litres of water. Generally they're always full when we leave. And um, so I never underestimate it. And the other thing along with all the gear of course is don't overload. Um, have reasonably strict rules in Australia regarding um, loading cars and trailers and caravans and GVM. It's a bit of an ugly word, cross vehicle mass. But people always have a tendency, me included, 
of going over the maximum weight the car and the van are meant to be. So something to keep an eye on and the, the, the uh, Scalis or the, the MBR motor vehicle people who look control the roads here pull them up and they've got portable scars and they can show them underneath. So, yeah, be a bit careful if you're travelling and you're overloaded, make sure. What's that oh, one? I can't see. You right? No. Oh. Anyway, motor vehicle registry up here on the highway. It's the last place on the right heading north, just before you head up the hills. And they have a way bridge there, public way bridge. There's one on the left and one on the right. So if you drive onto the one on the right, which is closest to the building, there's a little brick office there. Just drive up to the window and you can actually see how much your vehicle weighs in the window. Um, the other one on the other side, you gotta get out and push buttons and you can weigh your axles and that. So not a bad idea to find out how heavy you really are. You know, and then think about what you've got to weed out of the car if you have to. Um, Sorry, was it not just about on the edge of town, is it? It's, on the, it's the last place on the way north. It's so. past Bunnings okay. on the right-hand side. Okay. Got Bunnings and then there's a Shell or Coles right. service station on the left. You go just past it. Yeah. Is charge? No. No, no oh. charge. But the, the trucks use it five days a week. Oh, okay. So you're better off going on a Saturday or Sunday. Well, then yeah. tomorrow, so it'd be a good day to go on. Yeah, just you drive past the place, and then you drive into it, and then drive back over the oh, okay. yeah. way bridge. And I do it every time I go out of town, and then disappear real quick. Oh, that'd be mm. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I put my Prado on this morning. It was two point seven ton. It's empty. <laughs> <laughs> I went sixty six last time I was on there. Yeah, with a trailer. With the trailer, six thousand. Six hundred kilos. Hey, we got a Land Cruiser, a three-ton van, and, and did it. And if we hadn't had the GVM yeah. upgrade, we would have been illegal. Yeah, yeah. and we're, we're pretty thin. You know, well, the insurance know. side of it's interesting, yeah. but you know, if the insurance company going to prove drive, um, what do we call themselves? The insurance company. So it would be interesting to find out because they replace everything if you've lost it, tow your vehicle from anywhere. <laughs> That sort of thing, so we're pretty busy around the place at the moment. Well, another thing that we talk about a fair bit, you know, Shaw's next. What's that say? Does your vehicle weigh less than its legal limits? 200 Land Series Cruiser, B, it's petrol auto. Yeah, the 200 Land, land, 200 land Cruisers, you can put a cut lunch in a water bag cart and beer and you're overweight. Yeah. Um, so some of that stuff you really got to be careful of. I can run a copy of this off anybody wants one. With a thumb drive or something. Yeah, keep kind of sure. One of the things that really bugs me about this town especially is the 40 pound mentality on tyres. Now I've been driving two wheel drives and four wheel drives around the bush. All my life, I actually grew up at Yundamau on the Tanamai. My dad was a missionary out there, he went out there in 1950. I come along in 55 and grew up there, and as soon as I could reach the pedals, I could drive the mission truck around. Just an old Falcon yet, which was quite good. And I learnt to drive in that, and then progressive to all sorts of other vehicles. And uh, I think my favourite was Volkswagen is that you go anywhere in this town and get your car serviced, you sit, check your tire pressures when you come out, it'll have 40 pounds in it. Now if you drive a Prado or like Roberts, uh, they recommend 30, 31 or 32 I think, in them, and if you, I actually had one courtesy of Toyota for a while, and um, was anything over 30 pounds, it was absolutely big. We, we did some experimenting up and down the old south road, you know, 60, 80, 100 k's an hour, and at 100 k's an hour you didn't know where you are going to end up, which side of the road, and jumping all over the place. Let them down to 25, and they're beautiful. You know, actually handled reasonably well. 
So be really careful of that. Go for what your tire placard says. And then if you want to know a bit more about that, somewhere in here, I'll find it in a minute. We've got a, a, a way to measure tire tread like Yeah, I hit a button. You got a Mazda Bravo, whoops. Yeah, keep going, Jess. Those tire pressures are based on hot pressures, not first thing in the morning before you've got any Well, weight. usually they're first thing in the morning. Yeah. And they shouldn't increase any more than four pounds. Okay. That was the old general rule. A thumb, and if you've got a tire pressure monitor, which are worth bugger all these days, you can get them for 30 bucks. 30 bucks on eBay, they're worth every cent, you know. See this guy? Quick one. Don't put it all the way, get it level. And you can do that by measuring the if tire pressures are the same, you can do it by measuring the footprint. Is that there somewhere, Brent? Mm -hmm. It's further back. Yeah. Okay, okay. Tell somebody where you're going, when you're going to be back, what you want them to do. If you don't make it back, then you're done with your plan. And then you get home and don't tell them about it. That's when you really get the shit. But tell somebody, you know, bring water. Some of the backup stuff that you can buy these days is really, really worthwhile. You got a spot with you or not? No. I don't know if you heard of Spot Messenger before. Yeah, it's, it's a little device about the size of a mobile phone. Is that in there? Yeah, next page. Next page, yes. A thing device boy some Americans that use satellites <coughs> and they have their own network. Oh, you, yeah, that's it. Okay, and that's what they look like. Yes, that's right. And it's got a... It's about as big as a cigarette pack. Yeah, you just start it, put it on the dash, put it on the track, and it'll, it'll, lay, it'll send a message to satellite every 10 minutes and end up with a trial like that picture there. Where's your goddamn? Yeah, really. There we go. Look what we have here. A brand new Spot Gen 3. You look at that one, okay? But if you accidentally press that SOS button, you bring your tracking plan, you can customize your tracking button, we'll send your contacts, your GPS location, and whatever message you set up. And I could tell where they sat for lunch, and I could tell where they camped overnight, all that sort of stuff. So it's a bit of a telltale thing. But when I go to the desert, at least my brother lives in New Zealand, he tracks me whether we go through the bush, he keeps an eye on me. But the end, on the... On the the ray right into Birdsville. Anyway, they pushed the button and they actually sent a helicopter from Mount Isa to Birdsville and then Birdsville out to these blokes. They left their bikes out there and then they got brought into town. And uh, so then she was there for five hours on the side of the road. Bought it, the sat sleeves are very good. You know, a Samsung or an um, Apple phone, you can put them in a sleeve, and that actually becomes a satellite phone. Well, all this stuff's available over the internet. You can get what you want, but, you know, I'll pick on the stuff that I know is going to work. And I've been using those spot messengers probably for 10 years or more now. Every 18 months, it comes up on your computer screen. And you can see where it is. And you can click on any one of them when it's straight from the spot and see what time they were there, and what time they were at the next place, whatever. Yeah, keep going. And that's if you want to zoom right in, that's what you get. You can really see in detail of where they are, especially if you're in the mountainous country or something like that. More. What's this? Transfer your phone into such a oh, yeah. The big one. And that costs me like 50 bucks a month, whether you use it or not. We've got 4 a.m. 3 a.m. 
Right. Yeah, okay, using the four draw system on dirt roads is a good idea. Um, if you got a full-time four-wheel drive or constant four-wheel drive, good idea to lock the centre diff. No, nine years has passed. Nothing has evolved. Yeah, it's this is extremely dangerous behaviour. Yeah, pitch camp, wait, and we'll go back and find somewhere to stay. Not worth organising around with trees. You know how much damage you can do to your vehicle by just by going through a, a level crossing of a metre, half a metre of water. You know, your diffs get water in it, and all the gear, all your bushes and everything get water in. Any greasable joints usually there's, they get full of water and the wheel bearings suffer too. You know, I came back from Birdsville in 2012 after we'd been stuck there for a week. Uh, had big rain, cancelled the races and everything. And um, a lot of water on the way back and it, I had to get all my diffs done, replace the wheel bearings, replace the diff bearings. The gearbox shit itself, that was 10 grand. And, um, you know, on and on it went and I just see big time rain these days. Out there in the community and uh, my dad had to go to Melbourne or somewhere and I had to go to Mount Isa. So, and it looked like rain. I said, as soon as it starts raining, because we're the west, wake us up and we'll take off straight away. Stay in front of the rain. So we did that. And it started to rain at 3 o'clock in the morning, so we were out of there. Got to within 80 k's of town. And there's this creek about a metre and a bit deep. So I walked through it, um, and the sandbank in the middle, so I was only an HQ ute, so I didn't bother trying that. Silly buggers opened the doors, didn't they, <laughs> to get out and all this shit's floating down the creek. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a worry. I remind him every time I see him, what happened. Don't you talk about that since incident? I said, well, I told an awful lot of people about you over the years. What not to do, you know? So in another hour or so, it was down low enough so we could get across the HQ with that. Go yeah, sure. See a start key there? The Range Rover down the bottom here. Mm -hmm. That's it, it's gone. No? <coughs> the car is not Now this guy's a Range Rover. Early Model 1, three and a half litre, whatever. Doing a good job. And he stuffs up big time. Did you go? Yeah, it's going over like that. Don't touch. Oh. Oh. Yeah. We're in the other track. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, we. Oh my goodness, it's going to go all the way. Oh, he's... he's in there. He's probably in there. He gets out, and then he just. Oh my god. Why is this guy running down the hill? Run away, get away from it. Have a look at the gear on the way down the hill. Oops. Compressor there somewhere. Toolkit. Recovery equipment. Brains. I don't like climbing still steep hills and I don't like going in caves. My mum's mother used to live at Violet Town. So we go up there a fair bit and Roaming around the country. Winch. On the left is a tie down point. The big loop is actually a rated recovery joint. So if you got something like that, it's good. A lot of them take. Yeah, 
That's another one. That's on the front of a Prado. Early model one. Yep. Now, under the left, this right hand headlight, which is on my side, see directly underneath, you have a Cut hole through the pipe. Yeah. Actually, wrap and snatch them strap around that, and that just Try cut it. the pipe in half. Mind you, you keep that. Don't use the tow ball as a recovery point. Next. Tyres. Okay, so the width of the tyre is 265 millimetres. The height of the tyre is what is it, 100 and... Most cars are around the STR range these days. You know, they're over 150 k's or thereabouts, and then standard on a tr one of the Toyotas, I forget the name, it's Prado. By the look of the wheel. Yeah, sure. That's your Prado <coughs> yep. measurement. Go. 230 at 20 psi. Flat one. No good measuring that, it's a bit too low. Yeah, keep going. Sandhill country. Yeah. You go fast, especially if it's a road train. Yeah. Cattle truck especially. Now, we've got Spinifex protection on the front of this cruiser. We had to drive at night, so we had to get some eyes. Wasn't much light sneaking through the shade cloth. And that's 70% shade cloth. Just wrap it over the bull bar and put it under the bonnet though. Comes out of the bonnet. Over so, the prevent, pre pre preventative method is better. Stop and get. Cup Swiss tourists. Said people from Detroit, vice presidents, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, we ended up with 45 people and 18 cars out in the middle of the desert, and this is some of the. We made, went down the Hay River originally and we couldn't get through. We had run out of tyres. In the meantime, I'd gone to the Field River, the next one over, and taken the Ford crew through there and actually brought them back. So what they did is that once we got the birds all, went out to play on Big Red in the morning, come back for lunch. Another group flew in in aeroplanes. They um, all had lunch together, 80-something of them. And then I took the second group out to Big Red in the afternoon. We had a play out there. And then came back and next morning we were off back to Alice through the cattle country over there. Oh, Brett, let's see who was here. Frank Desert Race, been involved for that for a long time. Next, I think it's over. So we're heading up the town line, one of the places looking at, I think it was towards um, Lake Gregory at the, to the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, right. right. so that, that'd be a lot of people will be up there. Watch out for spin effects there, and that's no, it. No. no. no that's that's part of the Could Bell go, or are you going to go through? Um, I think probably we haven't sort of made a decision or anyway yet. We just um, yeah. you know, did the old Google. I think you go to the, the art centre at Belgo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and I'll show you where to go. Or, Okay. Get a permission off them or whatever. Yep. And the other one is um, Villa Luna. Yep. That's where the fuel depot is. Yeah. With Belgo, it says um, I'm agreeing with your ring ahead, but I, I can't imagine their signal. Yeah, no, they got there. satellite. Oh, okay. You know the big towers. Yeah. They run that sort of communication pretty good. Yeah. So we'd have to ring them on satellite, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Just ring ring an ordinary phone number. Yeah. Cost you the same. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going up there. So if we go off to camp, you recommend doing the cover for the spin effect? Sorry? If we go off the road, even a bit. Yeah, just put on an old track or a fence or something. Mm -hmm. But if you're going slow, you shouldn't have any trouble. Okay. Okay. But don't park on it. No. Started in 2000 with Lindsay Bookie, traditional Aboriginal fellow out there. He wanted to do tourism. And the reason we did that is that when I had this group of Ford people, we went over to Birdsville and I said, Well, you want to find some witchetty grubs on the way over, so 
He's a oh, oh, range for liaison point, you know. And they found a few, but not enough for the bikes to climb out. Lindsay's place is called Batten Hill. The O double T O N, yeah. And um, quite, quite funny. I said, Lindsay, you got to do better than this on the way back? Because I offered him a bunch of cash for it, courtesy of Ford. Anyway, he said, I'll do better on the way home. He said, when you leave, when you're leaving, Jervois come into the town. I'll have a sign for you. And um, so we went over there. We had lunch at Ruthful at Jervois Station, and then kept going. And my wife said to me. Um, was a sign that Lindsay's so I've got the faintest idea. Oh re recognise that something's a bit different. Anyway, I belt down the plenty of highway. Eighteen cars behind me. And I see a pair of pants hanging out of a tree. On the side of that there's my sign book over here somewhere. So looking around here he is parked on the opposite side of the road. So I stopped afternoon tea boys, we just had lunch better. I said, This is different. So I mounted the curb into the scrub. Here, Bookie, he's got a corner. Got a kangaroo cooking on. He's got bloody artifacts and all sorts of shit. The whole family there. You know, they sold everything. And uh, ate everything on the road. All there was was a skeleton left of this kangaroo that he'd cooked. And he says, you're an hour late. He said, I knew. Yeah, I know you're on the hour late because I wanted the kangaroo to be cooked. Instead <laughs> of leaving, you know, keep your life. And anyway, two years later there was a two 12 blocks campground telephone there, satellite phone, and um, yeah, last year we didn't have anybody go through because of our famous COVID, but the year before, there were 400 cars went through. There. Joel, tell them how you get to Batten Hill and it leads yeah. on to Birdsville. Yeah, yeah, you go out on the Plenty Highway, a place called Jervois, and then from Jervois you follow the 23rd parallel down until you hit the Hay River. I'll put this on the map too. And then you follow the Hay River in a little bit. There's the Batten Hill bush camp. And they do bush tucker tours and all sorts of stuff around there. They rang me yesterday, bush tucker tracks bugger. Got washed out to hell, so I said I just make a new one alongside it. That's an, what they're gonna do. The Batten Hills Batten Hill camp has got a uh, eighty kilometre driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's good. Off the highway, yeah. And um, there's a track from there down to Popple's Corner. You go down, meet up with the Madigan line at Camp fifteen. Go down to um, Camp 16, you can go across the Madigan line, or you can go south, because they had an oil well down there and they made this beautiful road. But several places just washed out pretty bad. Anyone done the Simpson Desert previously? No, no. gotta be, gotta do it. I wished I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cost me a bloody fortune over the last 20 odd years going out there and back. I think I'll... Joel took four carers with him. That's what cost him the money. Not only that, getting cars ready and... Oh, yeah, yep. All that sort of stuff. Any guidelines on, like, van tyre pressures? Like, particular Sorry? Van tyre pressures? So most oh, run them down a bit as well. And yeah, right down, 10 pound. If, you, if it's a rough road... Joel's van weighs two tonne, and he pulls it with an F250, and it's got big boots on it. <laughs> 